of economies around the world. It's not just here in the United States. It's happening out in Europe, Canada, Australia, UK, many other areas. And right now we see that British consumers, well, it looks like we have a major problem, especially in retail right now. It looks like there's a huge slowdown. There was a little pop up and everyone went, whoa, everything's getting better. And all of a sudden the data shows that the economy is slowing down at the start of this year and it's now being felt more broadly and what we're seeing right now is that we had this little bump up where people thought wow things are really getting better and everything looks great and now we're starting to see things rapidly change I mean in the beginning of the year here in the United States we saw retail completely implode on itself and it's actually gaining speed now and things are getting worse. We're seeing the housing market in many countries. Well, they are starting to stall and things are going in the opposite direction. Now, we know the UK, they are trying to leave the EU. And we mentioned yesterday that, well, the EU is trying to shake them down. They want an exit fee. Now, we thought it was going to be around between 40 and 60 billion maybe up to 100 billion they're looking for 120 billion euros to leave the union and the brits are having none of it brexit's uh, secretary david davis said negotiations would be plunged into crisis from the start because the eu refused to discuss a trade deal until britain agreed to pay the brexit bill Davis warned that Britain would walk out of the talks unless the EU drops its demand. And we can see right now that they're saying that this is ridiculous. We are not going along with this whatsoever. Prime Minister Theresa May has said that unless she gets the kind of deal she wants from the EU, well, she will withdraw without any accord. There is a fight going on now between the deep state, the central banks, and the people that are fighting against them because the central banks the deep state they still want control and they're going to try to keep control any way they possibly can they will not allow countries to leave they're gonna force them to stay and I wouldn't be surprised if this bill if they throw on other fees and bring it even higher to make it seem like they can never leave now, we'll see the UK, they might just say, you know what, we're doing whatever we want. We don't care. We're just leaving. But we'll have to wait and see how this all plays out. We see out in Greece, well, things are not going well there. The Greek debt relief deal, well, it fails in the last minutes. And we see that Germany, the IMF, they clash again. And the big issue is what happens to the Greek economy after 2018. Now, the Greek economy... It has never gotten better. Now, of course, they said they came out of a recession. Actually, they're back in the recession. They never really left. All they did was manipulate a lot of the numbers to make it look like they were doing a lot better when they were taking on more debt, saying, see, it's working. Look, everyone, everything is fine. But that's not really the case. Everything was falling apart, and it's still falling apart. Actually, they're not even in a recession. They're in a depression right now. Here in the United States, well, we're seeing a complete breakdown of the entire system. We're looking at the soft data. That is collapsing right now. The Richmond Fed's manufacturing survey, it has crashed by the second biggest drop ever in May. New order volumes, growth completely disappeared. Capacity utilization shrank dramatically. Order backlogs disappeared. Shipments plunged. The average work week tumbled. And when we look at manufacturing, well, the same thing is happening. It is slumping to an eight-month low. And when we look at everything right now, we can see we are witnessing a total breakdown of the entire system. Look what, what we are talking about now. We're talking about retail contracting, stores closing, going bankrupt. GDP at 0.7%. Actually, that's the manipulated number. It's in the negative range. We're looking at corporate defaults, student loan bubble, the bond bubble, the, mar the stock market bubble. We're looking at manufacturing 
declining. We're looking at corporations, manufacturing, saying, listen, we can't bring jobs back here. We can't open manufacturing plants. Actually, we have to let people go. The situation right now is worse than ever. The entire system's breaking down. Auto parts, well, that used to be the one sector where people were looking at saying, you know what, things look pretty darn good because the auto part sector looks great. And this sector has been a quality leader to the upside since 2009. And now it's crashing. New home sales, well, they plunged 11.4% month on month. And what we're seeing right now is that this is not really a surprise to any of us. Maybe to those people who are listening to the corporate media where they thought, wow, real estate's really doing well. I should sell my house now. I should go out and buy a house now. It's starting to fall apart and it's accelerating right now. And basically, when we look at new home sales, going back to 2011, they are unchanged. They're exactly where they were back then. So we have a major, major problem right now because all they did was inflate the bubbles and we had the ups and downs, ups and downs of existing new homes and all of this has gone absolutely nowhere. And if mortgage rates continually rise, like we're seeing them do right now, it's going to get worse and worse. Actually, we're seeing medium new home prices, they have fallen by 3.8%. The whole thing's starting to slow down. The whole thing's starting to fall apart. And the biggest driver of new home sales collapse was in the West, which saw a 26.3% collapse. Now, this is the most since October of 2010. Now, the question is, with the Fed rate increases, have they already triggered the collapse because it's starting to feel like that. Now, we know that Trump put forth his budget. We already see that Congress is saying, absolutely not. This is just ridiculous. We, we can't do anything like this. And of course, Congress, they're in the pockets of the central banks, the corporations, and they don't see a problem because they're just seeing the central bank, well, print some more money. Give it to us. We don't care. And what is happening right now is that we're bankrupt. I mean, that's what is happening here. Yes, we can create more currency, but it just makes it worse. Look at Greece. They can take on more debt, more debt, as long as, you know, more people get hit with austerity. They sell off a lot of their property, a lot of their assets. Well, the same thing's going to happen here. The country is bankrupt. It cannot survive anymore. The tax receipts coming to the government, it is not enough anymore to cover the interest payments. And the interest payments are low. Can you imagine if they ticked up a little bit? It'd be a complete disaster. Now, Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin said that Trump's budget will achieve savings through the reforms that prevent taxpayer bailouts and reverse burdensome regulations that have been harmful to small businesses and American workers. Translation, taxpayer bailouts are imminent especially now that the current economic cycle is the third longest of all time and a recession grows likelier with every passing day. Actually, let me correct that. The depression grows likelier with every passing day. Now, we can see that Trump is preparing the economy for a collapse because all of this will not be able to exist. A lot of it's going to completely disappear. Actually, most of it's going to disappear. And when we look at the actual data of what's been going on in the economy, we can see that we have been in a depression all along. Yes, I know the Fed, the U.S. government, they're not mentioning this at all because, like I said before, they don't mention it until we're actually in it and people notice it. Right now, no one's noticing it because the Federal Reserve, the U.S. government, they know how to play the game. They realize if we create all these entitlement programs, we can keep a lot of people quiet and we can keep a lot of people semi-happy. 
where they won't say anything because they're living off the government. Now remember, the system is designed not to work for the people. The system is designed to work for the central bankers, to work for the government officials, the corporations, the um, the elite. It is not designed to be a system that makes people prosper. That's why we see a huge lower class. The middle class is completely gone. And this is why everything's flowing up to the 1%. But when we look at the economy right now, and we look at it over the last 10 years, do you know it's exactly equal to the average rate that the U.S. economy grew during the 30s? Now, during the 30s, that was during the Great Depression. And if we look, they had wild swings, like in 1930, GDP was down negative 8.5%. And remember, these are unmanipulated numbers back then. They might have been manipulated a little bit, but they're pretty much, they're pretty good. 1931, negative 6.4%. And there was a lot of negatives and positives going throughout these years. And if we take the average of these GDP numbers over the 10 years, the growth of the economy was at 1.33%. Now, if we go from 2007 to 2016, and we look at the GDP numbers that we have there, and these are manipulated, remember. Like 2007 was 1.8, 2008 was negative 0.3, 2009 was negative 2.8, and so on. We get the same exact average, 1.33%. What does that tell us? tells us we're in a depression right now, but a lot of it's covered up. They're pumping up the stock market. A lot of people are living off the government. The number of jobs that were created by the government was to keep people quiet and to keep the system operational because the government continually has to borrow money to pay for these millions and millions of people. And when the system breaks down, these people are going to be out of a job. There are no jobs in the private sector for them. And this is millions of people. It is going to be a complete disaster. Trump knows this. And for all those people who thought that Trump was just going to come into the office and go in there and change everything by snapping his fingers, saying, okay, listen, we know this is manipulated. We know this... Uh, gold and silver markets manipulated. We're going to have to change these rules. We're going to have to get rid of these people. No way. First of all, the deep state is so intertwined in the government, completely impossible to play that type of game. Second of all, the deep state, they just don't leave just because you tell them. They fight back and they're dirty. And I believe that Trump in the beginning thought he would be able to bargain with all these individuals and make work out deals. If you give me this, I'll give you that. But it looks like that's not happening right now. So his strategy right now is to go along with them. And that's what it seems to mo many people. Many people believe that he is going along with them. He's part of the system. But we can see there's little things that he's doing right now where he's looking at all the land that the Bushes, that the Clintons, that Obama all set aside. He's looking at what why they did this. What is there? Is there oil? Or is there gold? Is there silver? What natural resources are there? Because once the system comes down, we're going to have to depend on ourselves. Because when the system breaks down, we're not getting oil from Saudi Arabia, from the Middle Eastern countries. It's not going to happen. Remember what happened back in 1970, where we were transitioning to this new petrodollar system. Well, oil wasn't flowing into this country. It was hard to get when you try to go fill up your car. Well, Trump realizes that this is going to happen once again, but this time we're not transitioning to a petrodollar system. This time the system's crashing and the people here in the United States, well, we're going to have to depend we're going to have to depend on ourselves to get by. And this is why he's looking at all these different areas. And right now, Trump is looking at Alaska, the National Wildlife Refuge, to drill for oil there. Now, before we start drilling and everything like that, 
he needs to start bringing cash into the U.S. and set up supplies to other areas. So what he's looking at, and he understands that there's oil in this country that we can tap, and there's a huge strategic petroleum reserve in this country, and they're located in Louisiana and Texas. There's 688 million barrels of crude. And this was started back in 1975 after oil supplies were interrupted, remember, when we were going on to the petrodollar system. And we couldn't bring the uh, oil into this country. Of course, they were out there saying there were shortages. There wasn't enough oil in the uh, world. And I remember them lowering the uh, speed limit down to 55 so everyone could serve gasoline. And once the system was laid out and everything was up and running, oil started to flow back into this country. Now, according to Trump's plan, the reserves will start to be sold from October 2018. At the same time, the U.S. would boost its oil production here in the United States because we have to be self-reliant. Remember, he said going forward, trade is going to be very important. For a time being, just like when we were coming on the system, onto the system in the 70s, when we couldn't get oil in, we're coming off the system now and we don't have trade really set up with all these countries. Now, all these countries are going to have their own problems. And we're not going to get the products from China. We're not going to get the oil from other countries. It's all going to come to a screeching halt. And that's why we need to make sure that we are prepared for what is coming. Now, does this mean that all these plans are just going to work out and everything is going to be fine? No. He's trying to push this. He's trying to maneuver away to make it all happen but the question is will it happen in time in time for the collapse i don't know because it looks like things are breaking apart very very quickly and this is why you have to depend on yourself this is why you can't depend on the government because when things fall apart well you won't be able to look at the government because the government will be reeling and many of those individuals will be out of a job and the government will be broke and you will have to look inward and say, okay, we have food, we have fuel, we have the ability to sustain our lives. That's what prepping is all about. Just like the government is trying to prepare right now for a catastrophe. Now, they've been preparing for a very long time. They understand the system's coming down. You need to do the same.